give us what we want. What do you want? The tutorial. The color grading tutorial? Yes. Well, you can only do it on time before I do anything. Fine, but if you don't do it, you'll be dead. Yeah, I got it, okay? Here's the color grading guide for DaVinci Resolve. Hey ghosts, this tutorial is for the beginner. Someone maybe with a Fujifilm X-T3 or X-T4 and wants to stop relying on film simulations like Eterna or LUTs to color grade their footage. Now we're gonna be using DaVinci Resolve because it's the one I use and I also think it's the best. It's also free. So my version is 17.4.2 build eight. Yours might be slightly different, that's okay. They're functionally all pretty similar but we're not gonna be having any of those complicated steps or paid features like noise removal. Instead, I'm gonna give you the simplest, easiest, and most effective way to color grade. Now, before we begin, it's really important to ask yourself, why color grade? Why did you even click this video? Why even bother learning about this really annoying process? It's because we want everything that we make our footage to look beautiful, to look cinematic. Now, what you capture should look better than real life. If not, then what was the purpose of even trying? What was even the purpose of getting into cinematography? So to get the best image, you're gonna want to have good exposure and lighting even before you start color grading. So in order to have good lighting, you want to choose the right time of day. People often ask me, uh, my color grading is really good. Can you teach me? Uh, you know, why is my color grading so clean? The truth is, it's not my color grading. I just go out during the times of days where the lighting is ideal, the best. So that's typically sunset, overcast, or blue hour twilight. The blue hour twilight is when the skin tones look the nicest and it's the most easiest to color grade. So depending on your different, like sunset, right? It's, you're gonna, the color grading process is gonna be a lot different than uh, color grading at night. Just be aware of that. So this is why it's important to learn how to color grade. All right, so we're gonna first start by going to the bottom and going to our color menu. Now I like to first change my aspect ratio because I like to add black and uh, I like to add black bars. So you can do it by going to settings, go to master settings and manually input your resolution to have the black bars. But if you do go to 4K, then some computers, I understand, uh, used to have a, a third, uh, a, before my M1 Mac, I had a Mac from uh, 2013 and I had the worst playback. So I understand, keep it at 1080 for smoother playback and instead go to timeline and go to output planking and then change the aspect ratio like this. I like 2.39 and then voila, we have the black bars. Just be aware that if you export your final project like this, you will have black bars on the left and the right of your video when you upload to YouTube. So if you don't wanna do that, then uh, change your timeline resolution this way and just uh, uh, YouTube or search it how to do it. It's a long process. Okay, so let's begin our color grading. So remember that 
For Fujifilm cameras, uh, log profiles are gonna be a little bit lighter. Now, this was shot during sunset, so as you can tell from my histogram, it's a little bit dark. Ideally, this should be, histogram should be more to the right. And in the color grading process, we're gonna wanna darken things down, uh, make things darker, unexposed things. But uh, we're, this is just how I shot it, and we make do with what we have. So we're gonna go and add another node. So this is a node, one node, right click, and then add a node, add serial node. You can also hold Option and press S to add a serial node. For this color grading guide, we're gonna be using two of these. So the first node is gonna be our temperature and our color. The second node is going to be our exposure and our contrast. If you change the order, let me just say the order does matter. You will have a different look and it will be a more clean look, but for this way, when we have temperature first, we do it backwards, then we will have more of a feel, more of a look. So we're gonna go start backwards. We go to the second node and we're gonna adjust our exposure now. I like to look at parade. I think it's easier to visualize what I'm seeing. And then there are two ways to color grade. We have curves and then we have color wheels. I'm colorblind. I find color wheels to be a lot easier and a lot more intuitive. If you ask me, uh, what is this high dynamic range color wheel? Ignore that, don't make things complicated, stick with the primaries. Now, what does this all mean? Lift is your shadow, shadows, gamma is your uh, midtones, and gain is your highlights. So we're gonna first start our color grading process by, now there's no right official way, standard way, but I'm gonna ad adjust my shadows. We're gonna adjust our shadows so that her hair, which is gonna be the darkest part of this clip, and make it as dark as it should be, right? If it's, you know, you're shooting something else, find the darkest part of your clip and make it and adjust uh, and um, adjust your shadows with respect to that darkest part. All right, so let's say this is how dark I want my her hair to be. Now I'm gonna adjust her exposure. Like I said, this is a little bit underexposed. It is sunset. Let's increase it to, okay, that's a pretty good amount, right? You can see her face clearly, 2.2. Now it's really important to always check your brightness. So maybe you might think this is too dark or too bright. Always check the brightness of your computer monitor. Maybe that might be the problem. So after this, we're going to adjust the midtones. This is the most important part and the most flexible. So you typically want to crush your shadows, make them uh, crush sorry, crush your midtones. So you want to choose a point where you think you really get a lot of a good amount of contrast and a good amount of depth in your exposure. So let's just say I think that's a good amount. Maybe I can make it a little bit brighter. Okay, let's say I think this is a good starting point. Now let's do our color and our temperature. So in general, you always want it to be a little bit warmer than usual. Uh, let's just say 200, right? It is sunset after all, blue hour, so warmer gives a, a, a nice feeling. And then you can change color f through color boost or saturation. I like to use color boost. Now, the minimum is probably about 10. Uh, if you do five, you're probably not gonna see a big effect, but uh, you also don't wanna go overboard. Like if you do 30 color boost, well, now it just looks really alien. Her skin tone is completely out of whack. So in general, you wanna aim for 10 or 20. Uh, 15 is typically a good spot for your color boost. I'm gonna do 10. Now let's just say you really, really, really like the look of 20 color boost, but you don't like her skin tones. In this case, you can add a parallel node. So you right click and instead of serial node, you add a parallel node. And then in this node, you will adjust for her skin tone specifically. However, this will cause a lot of noise. And because the noise reduction feature in DaVinci Resolve is not free, we're going to ignore this step. But just be aware that you can uh, fix this problem using the vector scope. But let's just get back on track. Okay, so we have a color boost of, let's say 15 for now, temperature of 200. And this one, we have our contrast and our exposure. Now let's take a look at what we have so far.
Now that's pretty good, right? I think uh, some of you might think that's pretty good. Now let's make it a little bit better. I think my secret sauce is by adding contrast. So on this right here, you're gonna want to add a contrast of 1.1. And this will really give you a lot of depth, a lot of, uh, con a lot of, a lot of oomph uh, in your video. But just be aware that once you add contrast, you might want to lower some of your um, initial contrast. So maybe up your tones just a little bit so it's not too contrasty, right? Okay. All right, and now let's see what we have. I like that, but I still think that the color is a little bit weird, especially on this blue, the blue ridge of the mountains. So I'm gonna bring my color boost back to 10 to make it more subtle. Remember, don't go overboard. Never go overboard. Try to make it subtle changes. Try to make it as natural and clean as possible. All right, so I think that's pretty good, right? Now, let's say that this is what you want and you're satisfied with this. Now, all you gotta do is you gotta copy and paste uh, uh, what you just did. So copy and paste, and then go to the next scene, right? Assuming that you didn't all of a sudden change your white balance or change your f-stop or whatever, uh, add, a, add a node and then just add your settings, right? So this is your exposure, and now we're gonna add our temperature and color. So let's say 200 and then Let's see. Pretty good, but you might think this is a little bit too warm. In that case, maybe you might want to lower your temperature for this specific video. Maybe keep, oops, keep it at zero. Maybe 100 is fine, right? So this is how you color grade. Now, sometimes it can be obnoxious to go through all of these individually. Sometimes it's easy and you can just copy and paste and sometimes not. But just be, just, you know, be patient. At the end of the day, it's always worth it. Now, when you're color grading, just a tip, don't try to make these drastic changes. Some people like to look at their scopes and like, oh, see how my scope right here is really, really full. Is this good? I mean, take a look. I don't think this looks good at all. Um, some people want to say, are tempted to do a contrast of 1.3. I'm telling you, 1.1 is the sweet spot. Sometimes you can I do use 1.3, but that's for if I want a specific look. 1.1 in general is going to give you probably the best results, especially as a beginner. All right, so let's see. Let's just copy our settings, what we did, and see what we have. All right, let's take a look at this one now. It's pretty nice, right? Now, as you can see, for this second part, in the beginning, it was pretty good, right? It was uh, the exposure might be what you want, but towards the end, maybe you don't like the exposure. Maybe you think her face is too dark. In this case, you always want, want to uh, color grade for you know, the extremes, for the worst part of your video. So this one, we might still want to make our shadows a little bit brighter, right? So that her face is not too dark. As you can see from the scopes, right? It's kind of borderline getting clipped. So you don't want to make it too dark, right? All right let's just do something like that, okay? And then in the beginning, you just have to sacrifice, you know, this part will be a little bit lighter than maybe ideally you want it. Okay, all right, so that is a really simple way to color grade. As you can see, there are only two nodes. Really, really simple. Let's see our other clips. Do the same thing. This one's a little bit too warm. Let's keep it at just 100. All right, pretty good. I 
I think this looks great. The warmer is usually better. Just keep that in mind. All right, so let me just give you a slight warning for this, uh, this, this guide. Now, using this process to color grade, you can save a lot of time and, you know, make, uh, you can color grade really uh, quickly. However, you do have some problems. If you only have two nodes, sometimes you have some problems. When you just uh, adjust for coloring, all you do is change the color boost. For example, in this clip I provided, as you're gonna see, I color graded to so that her skin tones look nice, right? Look natural. But look at the background. See how the blues and you know the the flowers in the background, they just look really, really strange, right? So just be aware that for, especially for food each camera is different. Fujifilm cameras will be slightly different than other cameras um, in the color grading process. So just be aware that for the camera I use the X-T3, I do have this problem if uh, I do choose this color grading process where, you know, greens and blues, sometimes they can get really messed up and you might have to uh, add a parallel node and manually uh, color grade for those parts. In general, especially if you have a really monotone or similar looking, similar looking clips, I think you will be really happy with your results. All right, let's take a look. All right, so as you can see, this is a really, really simple process, right? Now, I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you learned something. And just remember, when you export this final project, make sure you change the timeline resolution if you don't want the black bars on the left and right. All right, so that's the color grading guide. I hope you found it useful. Like, comment, and subscribe, or he'll be dead. Ha <laughs>